This is a recording of FP3, January 2007, question 7. This, is, uh, this question asks, gives us five points in 3D space, A, B, C, D, and, and G, and asks us first, uh, it says the line through A and G meets the plane B, C, D at M. Write down a vector equation of the line through A and G, and hence show that the position vector of M is 2i plus 4j plus 4k. Now, first thing I did was draw myself a little bit of a sketch here to get an idea of what's going on. I don't really know where these positions are, but this will at least help me think about it. So, drawn here, I've got my point A here, my point G here, and uh, I'm making an assumption, it's probably not right, but it doesn't matter for the moment, that uh, A and G are on opposite sides of the plane. So, B, C, and D here, like this. Now, part I, vector equation of the line through A and G, So to get that line through A and G, I'm going to choose one of these two as the starting point and then find the direction vector by subtracting the uh, one of the points from the other. So I'm going to use G as my starting point and um, then work and then find the um, direction vector by doing a subtract g. So my g vector is 3, 4, 5 here and then I need a parameter and then I'm going to sub do a subtract g which is 6, 4, 8 minus 3, 4, 5 here. Now I can simplify that to 3, 4, 5 plus T lots of 303. Three. Now, T doesn't have to be any particular number, and I can simplify 303 three as well, and so use instead 345 plus T lots of 101, one, just by adjusting the value of T, and that's a much easier vector to work with. So, that's the vector equation of the line through A and G. Now, we're told that the line meets the plane. Uh, B, C, D at M, which I've marked on my diagram here. Write down a vector equation of the line to A and G, and hence show that the position vector of M is 2, 4, 4. Now, um, there are six marks for this, so there's going to be plenty of work in here. Now, we're going to um, find the vector equation of the plane, and I'm going to do it by finding the vectors B, C, and B, D, and then using a cross product. So, the vector B, C is going to be uh, 1, 5, 4, subtract 2, 1, 3. That's going to equal minus 1, 4, 1. And the vector BD is going to be 3, 6, 5, subtract 2, 1, 3, which is 1, 5, 2. Now, I'm going to need to find the cross product of those two, and that's going to give me the normal to the plane. So, cross product of these is going to be minus 1, 4, 1, crossed with 1, 5, 2, which is going to give me 8 minus 5, 1 minus minus 2, and minus 5 minus 4 which simplifies to 3, 3, and minus 9. Now, I need any... That vector 3, 3, minus 9 is perpendicular to my plane. Um, I can use any multiple of this. It will still be perpendicular, so I'm going to use the much simpler version of 1, 1, minus 3 instead. So that's my perpendicular to the plane. My equation of the plane... is then going to be r dotted with that normal is equal to, well, any point on the plane will do. So I'm going to use b and 
that's going to be 2, 1, 3, dotted with 1, 1, minus 3. And that simplifies down to r dot 1, 1, minus 3 is equal to 2 plus 1 minus 9 is equal to minus 6. So my equation of the plane BCD is r dot 1, 1, minus 3 equals minus 6. So I've got the vector equation of the plane r dot 1, 1, minus 3 is equal to minus 6. So I'm going to rewrite that in its Cartesian form as x plus y minus 3z equals minus 6. Now, my line through the plane, remember, was r equals 3, 4, 5 plus t lots of 1, 0, 1. Or, in a more useful form for this purpose, 3 plus t... 4 and 5 plus t. And in the normal way, to find out where that intersects the plane, I'm simply going to substitute these this x, y, and z form into that equation and end up with 3 plus t plus 4 minus 15 minus 3t equals minus 6, just by substituting them in. If I rearrange that, I end up with minus 2t minus 8 equals minus 6 and minus 2t equals 2, or t equals minus 1. So, to find the coordinates where that actually meets the plane, I simply substitute that value of t into my line. So I get r equals 3, 4, 5, minus 1 lot of 1, 0, 1, which is going to give me 2, 4, 4 which then is, so uh, to write it properly, the coordinates of m are 2, 4, 4, which is what they asked us to find. Now, the next part of the question then says, find the value of the ratio ag to am. Now, we've made an assumption here that um, on our diagram that M lay between A and G but in order to make sure that we don't rely on this assumption because we don't know whether that's the case I'm going to redraw a diagram like this and I'm going to put A down here G here and I'm going to put M out there and we'll see what actually happens now I know these three coordinates now that's 6, 4, 8 and this one is 3, 4 5 and this one is 2, 4, 4. Now there are a number of ways of solving this that you'll see from the mark scheme, but this one struck me as quite straightforward. Now, notice that to get from uh, A to G, we can do this little equation. Um, we've got, sorry, from G to A, we've got 3, 4, 5 plus 3 lots of our direction vector for this line. Remember, 1, 0, 1 is the direction vector of this line. Gets us 6, 4, 8. So, to move from there to there, it takes 3 lots of that 1, 0, 1. So we can imagine sort of breaking it up into 3 parts like that. Then, we can also see that uh, 3, 4, 5... Uh, minus 1 lot of 1, 0, 1 is equal to 2, 4, 4. So there's 1 lot on the far side of that. So this shows... So therefore, uh, G divides AM in the ratio uh, 3 to 1. So the three parts between A and G and one part between G and M. And so, uh, in fact, AG to AM, so from A to G versus A to M, is uh, 3 to 4. Right, that's that part 2 done. And part 3 says, find a position vector to point P on the line through C and G, such that CP equals 4 thirds CG. Now, part three here 
is the line through C and G. So the line through C and G is R equals 1, 5, 4, which is C, plus T lots of, so the same method as we did before, 3, 4, 5, that's G, take away C, 1, 5, 4, which more simply put is 1, 5, 4, plus T lots of 2, minus 1, 1. So that's the line through C and G. Now, um, when R is C, then T equals 0. And when R is G, then T equals 1. So it takes exactly one unit of our direction vector to move from C to G. Um, therefore, um, if uh, CP is equal to 4 thirds of CG, um, it means that T has got to equal 4 thirds. Because at the moment, it's one unit between C and G, so if it's four thirds of that length, it must be four thirds of the direction vector. So T equals four thirds. Now we plug that back into the equation of our line. We get R equals one five four plus four thirds of two minus one one, which gives us one plus eight thirds five minus four thirds. And four plus four thirds, and all of that simplifies to eleven thirds, eleven thirds, and sixteen thirds, which is then the coordinates of uh, the position vector of P uh, for our uh, point when where it's ratio where CP is four thirds of CG. Now the last section that this question asks us to solve is to find, it says, verify that the point P lies in the plane ABD. Now, there are going to be, there are again, several ways to do this, and um, listed in the answers, but this particular one I spotted is quite an interesting one that they've used and is a little shorter. We could have done it exactly as we did with uh, part one, but we've done that already, so let's do this a different way and learn a different technique. So, notice our vector AB here is equal to 2 minus 6, 1 minus 4, 3 minus 8 is equal to minus 4, minus 3, minus 5. And then also that vector AD is equal to 3 minus 6, 6 minus 4, 5 minus 8, which is minus 3, 2 minus 3. Now, our vector AP, because we found the coordinates of that, is then going to equal 11 thirds minus 6, 11 thirds minus 4, and 16 thirds minus 8, which is equal to minus 7 thirds minus 1 third minus 8 thirds, or put much more simply, minus a third of 7, 1, 8. Now, if P is in the plane ABD, then it must be possible to build up this position vector here, AP, from elements of AB and AD as you move around that plane. Any, any, rate, any combination of these is going to yield a point in the plane. So, notice that um, minus a third of 7, 1, 8 is therefore going to be equal to m lots of 4, 3, 5 plus n lots of 3, minus 2, 3. And 7 comes from 4 and 3, and 1 we can make out of 3 and minus 2, and 8 from 5 and 3. So it looks like um, if we were to say instead that um, 7, 1, 8 is equal to 4, 3, 5, 
plus 3 minus 2, 3. We can spot that. We can therefore say that AP, which is minus a third of 718, is going to... So AP, therefore, is going to be uh, minus... Minus, it's going to be sorry, a third of AB plus AD, and therefore P for P is in the P is in the plane. A, B, D, which is what they wanted us to show. I think it's worth explaining why this is suddenly plus one third here. But don't forget that A, P here is this minus a third, 7, 1, 8. And these A, Bs and A, Ds are actually minus 4, minus 3, minus 5, minus 3, plus 2, minus 3. So all these negatives up here. So we've got negative vectors here and a negative vector here, which is why you only need the plus one-third at this point. Um, and that shows us that uh, because we can build AP out of uh, a proportion of ABs and ADs, then P must be in the plane ABD. Thank you.